Halo is full of amazing levels, from their impacts to the narrative, to the level design, and the detail, to just how fun they can be to play. With the original Bungie trilogy containing a total of 31 missions, everyone is bound to have a different answer when asked which is their favorite. And rather than doing a complete tier list judging all the levels from all the games, I wanted to jump just straight into my favorite mission and talk about why it's my favorite out of a big list of great levels. And it can still be a tough choice for me. It might depend on the mood I'm in when you ask me, but for now, my favorite level in Halo is the Maw from Halo Combat Evolved. Now don't get me wrong, I know some missions are bigger in scope, offer more variety in the sandbox, among other things, even within the same Halo game. I mean, then let alone looking into Halo 2 and 3's levels. But choosing a favorite, I have to go with the Maw, and I have a few reasons why. I'm a sucker for artistic flair within a video game's storytelling. And the way that the Maw perfectly bookends Halo Combat Evolve, ending the game on the horse you rode in on, the game even delivering that line as a chapter marker, <laughs> there is just something super satisfying about that. Seeing the ship all destroyed after being away from it for so long, and even the music fits this feeling perfectly as it also sets the tone for what's happening in the larger narrative. There are also some somber moments that make you reflect on the fact that you're back where you started, even though everything has changed. Going back to the cryo room and seeing it full of enemies, Going through the cafe fight that directly mirrors the original one just swapped out with Spec Op Covenant Forces. Little details like this are really what makes this mission stand out to me. Also, the unique nature of the reactor room encounter. Cortana instructs the chief that he must overload the ship's fusion reactors with explosives to detonate the ship and destroy the ring before it can fire. She guides the chief, you, to an armory where you can load up on rocket ammo and grenades in preparation for the reactors. And if you've played Halo CE, you should know that being provided with this large abundance of ammo in, an, in a designated room like this doesn't happen anywhere else in the game. And while yeah, there are areas where the game gives you stuff, some powerful stuff, it's never done in such a, a deliberate, organized fashion. The armory, the music, the specific place in the story, the galaxy hanging in the balance, it made you feel as though you were gearing up to drop into hell itself being in this armory. It was so effective at pumping me up as a kid and making me feel incredibly powerful and ready for anything. And then there is the reactor room. You have to press a button to move a pylon and expose the reactor and time a rocket or grenade into the vent as it opens and then repeat the process four times. This is a very dynamic, environmentally driven sequence that is unlike anything else in the game. It was a great piece of variety to get right up at the end of the game. Bungie could have easily made this a holdout wave fight or forced you up a climb, fighting tough groups of enemies on each floor as you go up. With both of these ideas sounding like they belong perfectly in Halo Combat Evolved, given how Truth and Reconciliation in the library pay, play out with their wave fights. But no, they have this very unique approach that is very appreciated to keep things from being predictable. But hold on, we're not done talking about variety yet. And after priming all of the reactors, you are guided to an elevator that lifts you up into the ship's vehicle bay. A timer then starts and Cortana instructs you to hop into a Warthog and get the hell out of there. Introducing the Warthog Run, a game ending staple that could honestly exist within every Halo game made from here on out and it would never get stale to me. The idea of madly running from certain death in gaming's most fun vehicle to end an epic campaign is amazing. And here in the mall is where that tradition began. While I know the length of the run compared to the length of the ship is ridiculous. Well, I didn't know that as a kid. I didn't notice. And now playing that section, my, my nostalgia guides my suspension of disbelief over this oversight. And I mean, it's a space ring infested with parasitic zombies and funny little ass aliens. If dimensions of a racetrack within a fictional ship make this epic moment unfun for you, I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, jumping that large gap, needing to ditch the warthog and run for your life at the end of the game, all backed up with the amazing music. It was just always the most memorable part of Halo Combat Evolved for me as a kid. And I think it deserves it. There's just so much to like here. 
They even included the death scene of the trusty Echo 419, your chauffeur throughout the campaign, as she is meant to be your original getaway ride, but is gunned down by a couple of banshees as you're waiting there watching it unfold. final aspect I wanted to cover before going over some honorable mentions for my favorite Halo level would be the way this mission includes some great enemy variety. Since at the end of the game Bungie knew they were gonna have to do something to make a reverse Pillar of Autumn interesting and more challenging, they very carefully created a non-stop change-up of enemy encounters around every corner. One minute it's the Flood, the next it's Spec Op Covenant, then there are Hunters. Then maybe Sentinels. Then it's Flood and Sentinels fighting each other and you just need to cross through. Then it's all three in one big chaotic room. I mean, at one point they specifically paired a ton of Sentinels in a hallway with three distinct Flood infection form triggers. Knowing that the Sentinels strip your shields fast, then the Flood infection forms eat you quickly when your shields are gone. These are both enemies that are considered easy to fight individually, but paired together in that room makes it very dangerous if you don't have the right weapons. It was just another small attention to detail that makes this mission so cool to me. But now, onto our honorable mentions for my favorite Halo levels. I think the next one in line at the moment is the Silent Cartographer from Halo Combat Evolved. That beach fight at the beginning is iconic. If you're gonna ask somebody who doesn't know much about Halo to recall a mission or a moment that they may have seen, it's most likely this beach fight, for good reason. It was really cool to see that in a video game in 2001. This mission also introduced the Hunters, which was awesome, and I felt like they were introduced in a neat way to be placed a couple times in the mission to really help the player understand what they were and what kind of situations to expect them in. As well as this mission being one that has the more open-ended mission variety, while Bungie has a path that most players are going to end up following to complete the objectives of this mission, it's also completely possible if you know what you're doing and where to go to do it out of order and do it a bit faster. And the freedom to have a mission like this isolated and allow the player to approach it in whatever order they want in 2001 was pretty special. Next on my list of honorable mentions of favorite Halo missions comes the outskirts from Halo 2. This mostly comes from my childhood memories with this mission, as a lot of Halo 2 you play as the Arbiter, and as a young kid I didn't find that particularly interesting because I didn't understand what was going on with the overall plot. So most of what my brother and I played co-op of Halo 2 were just the beginning chief missions kind of over and over again. Meaning the outskirts got a lot of playtime in my book, and that initial fight holding out the building there's just something really fun and unique about it that it's, it's just super memorable to me this mission also provided a great variety in gameplay there's the linear sections where you're moving through the city in the beginning there's a wave fight it introduces the hunters then you go through the hotel and the mission opens up you're out in a big open beach you can feel a little bit like some of the mission structure in halo combat evolved you get a warthog you get to drive through defeating enemies then you go into the tunnel and you have essentially a warthog run to the end of the mission and incorporated some of the best parts of a lot of the halo staples into one mission which is what makes it so great to me but yeah like i said in the beginning there are a ton of great halo missions many of which i didn't even mention in this video so i know not a lot of people might share my favorite being the maw so let me know down below what was your favorite halo mission and why and if you're curious on my thoughts of the Bungie trilogy as a whole, the video on screen now is my look at the entire trilogy and what made it so special. Thanks for watching.